It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by The Beat Seat. Welcome, welcome to the show that never ends, the Mark Inspire Show Day. 19, 22 in a row, part two. So we had our second earthquake and aftershock, I guess you call it, in the uh, left coast. I think we're switching, you know, existences here. And a few people respond to my, uh, you know, earthquake message earlier saying, you know, over here in California, we didn't have one. I'm like, yeah, aren't we, what's, what happened here? Like, I don't remember ever having an earthquake. They said there was one in 2011, but I don't remember that. I would say that uh, the aftershock was a little jarring. I did uh, mention it on TikTok. But uh, what do you guys think? Because apparently there's going to be a massive one during the eclipse. The eclipse is going to trigger some massive earthquake. And the news, the mainstream news, news the guy came out and said it. He goes, oh, she said, you know, oh, thank God, gosh, we made it through. And he goes, yeah, but that's just a prelude. There's going to be the, the really big one to look forward to is during the eclipse, the eclipse earthquake. And I'm like, what? And she just kind of smiled, the other newscaster. We're going to see if we could find that clip for you. And we're just going to discuss a couple of the theories that are out there about this Monday. The eclipse, total eclipse of the heart, and possibly more. I mean, a few of these theories are, are downright frightening. And I don't know if I could put much, much comedy into this because this is frightening stuff, but we're going to talk about it. There may be a few funny things, especially in some of these conspiracy theories, but some of them are really scary because they seem like they could be very true. Um, so I want to talk to, you know, talk to you about them and see what you think. Maybe you can leave your comments and we can have a little conversation about it. Uh, possibly even, I don't know, make some, do some call-ins or something like that. Um, we have Clapper on with us, so I don't know if we can do that. But besides the point, send messages in the chat. Let's see if we can delve a little deeper on this topic. I'm going to open up a screen here and see what we can find. We have Matt Zabrowski here, as you guys know. He's a woohoo guy. We also have Johan. She's the Weezer. First thing I wanted to discuss with you guys, like, what is this about? What is this about? This was yesterday. The Statue of Liberty. Some say it's Apollo. Statue of Liberty getting struck by lightning yesterday. What do you guys know about it? How often does that happen? And then we have an earthquake the very next day. How often does that happen? I want to know. Something to the last time, the Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning. I'm curious if you guys know. Uh, I'm in the process of building four beat seats, so I don't know if it's going to be a very long show. I gotta, or I may put a movie on or something. Like that. But uh, Matt Zabrowski, hit us with a movie. What's that? Joanne, keep the wheeze down, please. Wait. Wait. Joanne! Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. That was my bad. Joanne sometimes pushes it out of me. Oh goodness. So let's look at this. What do you guys think about this? Lightning strikes the goddess, right? Oh, here it is. Look at that, I didn't even know there was video. Where's the strike? I don't see it. I think that this is uh, either fabricated or someone really caught video of it. But that's crazy, lighting up the torch. I mean, it always goes for the, uh, 
It always goes for the highest point. Look at, here we go. Oh, freaking hell. Look at this. In, the informant here said, apparently people in New York are believing the end of the world is very close. The Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning yesterday, suffered an earthquake today, and will undergo a total eclipse on Monday, a unique alignment of the planets a comet El Diablo, three NASA launches honoring pagan deities, and the activation of CERN on the same day. But it's all coincidence. It's so freaking scary that they're doing all that. They're turning on CERN during the total eclipse. NASA's shooting three rockets at the total eclipse. For science purposes, guys. El Diablo, the, 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 the devil comet... I'm pretty sure this is a Planet X thing. So that's one of the theories. Look at this. Here we go. Solar eclipse coming. Earthquakes. Locusts coming. De devil as our president. <laughs> War is raging. Huh? Well, my Aunt Judy told me I'm supposed to destroy the country. Yep, you're doing it, buddy. Uh, so that's, I guess, what it looks like. Oop. Pardon me. I gotta turn the heat on. I also have Dust, because I've been building four beat seats, as I told you. This is the face of one of the beat seats. I just laser engraved the beat seat logo on it. Uh, and that's why I have dust in this freaking room. But I also have been cutting beat seats downstairs. They got all four cut. And one of them is already put together. But I have to put the snare wires in. Then I have to build the snares. And so I'm realizing I'm probably going to be up all night because these have to be ready for this kind of get together on Sunday with a bunch of special needs individuals. If you don't know anything about my drum, the beat seat, I invented it for myself so I could play guitar for you guys and write songs live in the moment. But it's also an extremely powerful sensory therapy drum for anybody with a special need. So I'm trying my best to alert any parent with a child with special needs that there's a drum that could change their lives. It has unlimited tones. Everywhere you hit it sounds different, and it's amazing to play. It's so much fun to play. So, um, beatseat.rocks, if you want to check it out. And let's get back into what's going on with this crazy eclipse story. So, eclipse. What I've heard, these are a couple of the conspiracy, conspiracies I've heard so far. The eclipse is going to roll through that the Atlantic Rift is gonna like f get pulled over the top, like it's like right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And the whole Eastern seaboard is gonna be wiped away and it will be under underwater because all that water is gonna come over as a tsunami in our direction, in the other direction. Um, all life gone. Um, <clears throat> then we're gonna have a re, basically um, there's, the, un the other one I heard is that there's a nuclear EMP above us that uh, Vladimir Putin has in the sky and that he's going to threaten during the solar eclipse to unleash it on America. And if that happens, there's one in ten that survive that. Um, and the, cre the scary thing is, while I was listening to this creator tell this, paint this picture, essentially, I'm listening and, and he's seeing it, and I'm imagining the life it would be if this, all this stuff happens... And I'm thinking about all the ones I love that, just like me, would probably not make it. And that, that that would be the end of us, is like, is trying to figure out how to get food and water. And like, and what do you do when, when there's no way to, I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll ride. And in my mind, I'm thinking all this. I'm like, okay, we have bikes. We'll jump on bikes. And I'm like, yeah, someone shoots us and takes the bikes at some point. You know, it's like, this is a messed up thought when everything shuts off. And people are like, oh, well, I still have this. You, you need crank stuff because everything is done. All electronics, every chip that we've ever created is fried. And this could have happened many times in, in the life of this world. And civilizations could have risen to this level hundreds of times, thousands of times. And every single time this potential happens and then it, they're, they're just wiped out. What do you do when you don't understand how to survive anymore? You die. The reason things stayed the way they did for so long, the way we see it, is because they were able to survive by going out and killing and 
someone was home taking care of the children and cooking. And, and all this stuff is like men and women work together in order for the families to, to come together and survive. Then we got so soft and cushy. It's all about things now. And now we're here in 2024 and the potential of everything shutting down or whatever is their freaking people are scattering all kinds of potentials that are, are being spoken of and they're not positive. One guy had a positive idea here and I want to kind of spread this out there because I think if we all do it at the same time, like he was saying, we could actually affect a different change here. Everything is frequency and vibration. You guys know that. I write songs here every night at 432 Hertz because frequency and vibration matters. And they've looked at how a group of people meditating on an idea can have a real effect in the world. And so the concept would be when this total eclipse is taking place, we as a group meditate on the idea of an awakening, a positive outcome from this event, a place where more people are able to see the real world for what it is. Treaty pe treating people the way they want to be treated. I wrote a song called The Truth. The hook is, you can never have it all. Until you wake, no, I'm sorry, there's like a whole freaking part, but it goes, you wake again, wearing thin through your skin. Win, lose, or draw, someone's keeping score. Down here or up there, it doesn't matter till your dying day. That's why you give it to people the way you want it back. You gotta give it to people the way you want it back. That's the hook. And I sang that song to my bass player back when I had a band back then, before I was a one-man band doing all this stuff and invented the, the only drum in the world for guitar players. And I'm playing this the night after I wrote, or the morning after I wrote it for Jay. My bass player was a crazy dude. He had these dreads all over the place. He had these sideshow Bob dreads, the coolest dude in the world. I love Jay. He's a sick bass player. I was a, an amateur musician at the time, and Jay was a, a, a pro, so was Dave. And I go to sit down with Jay, and I'm like, I got a new song for us. And I was just the songwriter. And so I show up, and I'm like, hey, listen to this. I didn't have a name. All I had was the lyrics. And I just sang that, that thing for him. And at the end, he goes, that's the truth. And I go, what? And he goes, that's the truth. He goes, that's the name of that song. That's the, the second song of, of mine that he named. That was one, and the other one was called Cave Song. It used to be called um, Sleeping Alone at Night. It's a beautiful song. It's about, uh, I'll maybe play it for you. Um, and so uh, I finished up Sleeping Alone at Night. He goes, that's Cave Song. And I was like, Cave Song? What are you talking about? He goes, I don't know. I just feel like it's, that's, that's called Cave Song. I was like, all right. So I changed the name of it to Cave Song. But the truth, I was like, I get. You know, because when you hear someone say, you can never have it all, um, it's hard enough keeping what you've made, a choice. And now you've got to live for what you are until you wake again, wearing thin through your skin. Win, lose, or draw, someone's keeping score. Down here or up there, it doesn't matter till your dying day. That's why you give it to people the way you want it back. And so I've been here 1,922 days in a row giving it to you guys the way I want it back. I show up here in the moment to try to break away from this negative world, create something on this guitar, have a laugh or two. Unfortunately, also understand the realities of our existence like a crazy solar eclipse, like an earthquake that happened and then an aftershock that took place at 6 p.m. And there's likely gonna be another one because if you think about it, that was uh, 10, 20 to 6 p.m. That was about eight hours. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, around two and three, two, three in the morning, we're, gonna, we're set to get another one. Um, my son was looking it up. He's like, you know, they said there's gonna be thousands afterwards. I was like, thousands? I said, do they get worse? And he's like, well, they say usually it doesn't get worse. Look at this. This is what it was like in New York City, guys. Guys, YouTube X Rumble, if you wanna come and see this, it's all over my shoulder here. Just type in my fire. Woo. Look, that guy was laying some steel. Uh -oh. Smart kids. Look at that, dude. Woo. Can I just... Can I just say, that is not the way my class would have reacted in 1996, you know? 
we were all there. Earthquake, I was like, what the f is that? Jimmy, did you crap your pants again? Sometimes when he does it, he shakes the room, you know? And no, it's an earthquake. Oh, guys, what do we do then? I don't know, any doorways to stand under? I don't know, let's go under our desks. Oh yeah, that, that will do. Everybody did that so quickly. That was ridiculously, that was like coordinated. They knew it was happening. You guys see that, right? They were like, uh, let's just pretend guys that we're in an earthquake and we're gonna really, this is like a, just a, a... How freaking quick is that? You know what it is. Since Columbine and since all the insanity with uh, the, the gun violence, they have so
you is ridiculous. Nobody likes you, Joanne. As I was saying, <laughs> and Joanne was wheezing through. Hey, Joanne, shush it! So the lightning bolt. Guys, not connected to the top of the, you know, she's holding the torch of God, Apollo. She's standing there, we're waiting for it to actually hit the torch. Instead, it's hitting her stupid feet, her stinky feet. Her feet have been sitting there for 100 plus years, stinking it up. No one's washing them, dogs. Yeah. And then she's getting lantern up in the air. Oh wait, come on, lightning bolt me. I'm Apollo, give it to me. Now nah, we're gonna hit you in your dumb feet. See if we could just, I don't know, burn the stink off, we were thinking. Save America, one stench at a time. You know, that's what, that's what they were thinking with the lightning bolt deal. But over here, look. Oh, wow, guys, look, it hit me right in the lantern. Oh, it did, you had the perfect shot of it. You just happened to be shooting it, right? Oh, guys, let me take a photo, right? No, guys, did you see that? I got a lightning bolt, right in the middle of the lightning bolt. Did you, or did you use Photoshop? I'm pretty sure it's a Photoshop deal, you know? You know, when you figure it out, sleuthing it. That's what we do here on the Mark Inspire Show. We kind of break through the facade of BS now that you have AI that's creating artwork for you. Look, there's like a, like a frog down here. Like, what is this? This is a terrible AI reproduction. Uh, let's, I think we got to kill Stu Kubrick back from the dead. <sighs> yeah, Stanley Kubrick, please. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, St. Peter, look, this is Mark Pyers from the Mark and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Mark and Spire show, that's right. Are you kidding me, you guys? You guys watch up there? Yeah, St. Peter, I had no idea you're a huge fan. Listen, uh, just wanted to connect with you real quick. What's the deal here? You know, you got a torch in the sky, you got Apollo. What are you thinking? Are we, um, are we dealing with end of days here? Like, you got a question. You got to question it. St. Peter's, he just hung up on me. He's like, Mark, I can't go on the air. Look at that. It's the ring of fire. Okay, so update. Earthquakes reported in various areas across the globe as the great solar eclipse approaches. The great solar eclipse. The X across the United States. Nineveh. What do you guys think? What are we, what's going to happen here on Monday? I got to go buy a crap load of water and some beans. 
remember, the more you eat, the, the, the more days you live without dying. <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? Anyway, guys, look, here we go. Anything else? Wow, wait, where is this? Dan Martland, right here. Dan Martland, he made this shot in Photoshop. Oh, uh, guys, look, I'm going to zoom in right now. I just want to take a picture of the torch real quick. You know, I'm just here. <laughs> Oh, I'm on Liberty Island. I'm just like, let me snap one here on this disgusting day. You know, when it's the worst day you can ever take a picture of, you know, the Statue of Liberty and the torch, I'm all over it. I'm going to post it to my Snapchat, everybody. Okay. This one's cool because it's a cloudy overcast day. You can't even see the Statue of Liberty. You know, she's basically like smogged out, Jersey smog, you know, we're going to snap that shot. Hold on. <laughs> hey, count down for me. Oh, oh my gosh, did you see that lightning bolt? Right, it just happened right when I pushed the, the trigger for my camera. Stupid. You made it in Photoshop. Look at that. I'm gonna even illuminate <laughs> the torch. Yeah, Mary Lou Retton's on her way. We know, we already heard the story. Guys, Mary Lou, she's just gonna run down and do a flipperoo. You know, they have the, uh, the pole vault there as well. The pole vault. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, goodness, you know. What was this like here? Cut! 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 <laughs> what the fuck? I gotta tell you, I kind of enjoy X now because it's like, there's so much stupid crap here. I can't deal with all the hate that comes, like, about political hate. But when I'm, like, looking at stuff like this, there is a lot of funny stuff there. Okay. Let's see if there's anything here. Any audio? There's a lot of people say I like this guy. And I do love Charlie Day. I think I do act like him a lot. I, at least I get uh, very emotional and, and, and kind of scream like that. Also, a little bit like this guy right here. This is kind of me. And I show. <laughs> Spectacular! Spectacular! This land holds great beauty. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I love you, Jim Carrey. <laughs> what an awesome scene. I totally remember this. Oh, man. How far to the crime scene? Well, I've been instructed to bring you first to the consulate, which should be beyond those trees on the other <laughs> side of the jungle, so we'll have to circle around. Oh, goodness. You got to love Jim Carrey, guys. Me, the greatest comedic actor ever. I love him. I really, I loved Jim Carrey. You could tell probably by my comedy. Um, I, I like to do a lot of physical stuff, and he was one of my definite, uh, I would say, um, mentors when it comes to physical comedy and facial expressions and look-offs and all kinds of stuff that I do. A lot of it comes from this guy. He's a just pure genius. A little loose. He's used every word to the advantage of the scene. The off too. Mr. Ventura! If you ever, if you ever have a chance, go back. We should actually watch this here. It's Jim Carrey when he, his first comedy wasn't telling jokes. It was going up and doing impressions. His impressions are terrible, but his physical impressions were so good. He did everybody like dead on the way their body moved. And when you have that ability that you can be a chameleon with your actions and your, and your mannerisms, and this is something that's really, really important when you're gonna be a physical comedian, is taking on that character in the moment and then becoming that character. And you guys have probably seen it if you haven't before when I break into Dick Face or I'll break into any of the characters I do, there, my body changes. Everything about the way I move, Hammerlin Jameson, the drunk reporter that I am, like every single thing um, in my body becomes basically a connection to that character and also a way for me to use that as a prop. And you know, I'll use Clippy or whatever in order to create some sort of additional comedy within the moment. Uh, but really the, uh, the extension of the comedy is every little piece of your body and the way you use it. And it's the same for any, I say anything that's um, like even a pitcher. I think about it for my son. I'm like being able to mimic another pitcher, something he used to do. I just he'd be like, "Hey, oh, Dad, who do you want to see?" I'd be like, uh, "I don't know. Show me Justin Verlander." And he he's like a nine year old, dead on looks like Verlander. I'm like, "Okay, let me see um, Mariano Rivera." And he's like, he throws a perfect Rivera. He's a lefty though, 
And then he's doing all these different people, and he just he had their hand motions down and the way their body moved. His Clayton Kershaw looks exactly like Clayton Kershaw. I'm like, it's a nine-year-old kid doing the kick of Clayton Kershaw and the move and the body. And he turned and he'd do the same movement of, of, of Verlander, and he'd come to the stop and he'd throw those hands here. And I was like, dang, that, that looks like Verlander, a nine-year-old left-handed Verlander. And like he settled on his own style of pitching. Um, which was like a mix of a few things, and now he's changed it recently. He used to do this crazy thing. I loved it. He was a little nine-year-old kid, and the way I pitched is I'd hold my glove in front of my hand like this, so all you saw was my eyes. I was a small kid, as I told you. I threw a knuckleball, slider, and fastball. My fastball was top 63 when I was younger, but my knuckleball was stupid sick. It was the best pitch. I love throwing it. Anytime I have a catch with my son, all I throw is knuckleballs to him. We're having a catch, I'm just throwing knuckleballs at him. And he's like, dang. And I said, you're going to learn that freaking pitch. Now he's old enough as a lefty. I said, I want to see a left-handed knuckleballer. Not only that, he's going to learn the other pitch I used to do, which is a sidearm. If you guys don't remember who Dan Quisenberry was, freaking love Dan Quisenberry. Quisenberry used to go down and, and do a submarine pitch. And so that was my sneaky pitch. I had my knuckleball, which people couldn't stand because they didn't know how to hit it. And it'd come in pretty fast, and that thing would move because it was not moving. It would just be like floating through the air and then drop because the wind would take it and stuff. And then every once in a while, I'd come up like I'm throwing my overhand, and I'd just come up from, I'd throw in like a sidearm. And people freak out because all the, instead of coming up over the top every time, you're all of a sudden coming from the side, and it's just hard to react when you only see that every once in a while. And it was such a nasty pitch. I remember striking people out with that all the time because no one expected it. Um, so I don't know why I've never seen a pitcher do that in the majors. A guy who's... And you know what? <clears throat> Closest I could see is this guy who's for the Yankees now. And he go, he'll go up and he'll just kind of hang in the air for a little bit. You know? And then he'll go. Like, that guy is cool because he's definitely taking advantage of, of time. Um, if you can control the time of, uh, of the game, you're going to throw people off because they want to move on their own, at their own pace. You control the pace, you control the game. And so the, my favorite thing about this is my son would get on the mound and he, he'd look at the guy and I taught him to do this. I'm like, you look over because he he's a small kid still. He's like me. And so, um, it, like I was. And so eventually when he get the ball, he'd get in there, grab the ball. And he'd come in here and he'd bring his head, hands over his head like this. Now, there's a guy who used to pitch for the Yankees. I can't think of his name, Matsuyama or whatever, Tanaka, whatever. And this guy would come back like this, and he'd stand there for a few seconds. And then he'd go. So my son took that on with this Clayton Kershaw vibe or whatever. And so he'd go back like this, and he's staring at the guy for a second. He's putting his foot and tapping his foot on the ground. He's grabbing a spot. And then he'd come in, and he'd start to finish his pitch. And people would be standing like, what? This kid looks like a crazy pitcher. There was one time he went back and held it so long that the, the, the coach on the other team was like, come on, let's go already. And I was like, no, keep doing that. That's freaking awesome. Like he just, I don't know what he was thinking. He, he held it for like five seconds. Like this little kid on a mound holding it, staring at the freaking batter for like five seconds. And then the coach was like, come on already. And he started going right when the coach said that. And I was like, this is such a badass way to pitch. And then he stopped doing the back. Well, like this, now he comes to here. He's like, oh, I know it doesn't feel right to me. And I'm like, dude, you don't understand how freaking sick that must look to a batter. When you're up there and you're just kind of staring at him like this for a second. And you're tapping the ground as you grab your spot in the ma on the, uh, at the mound. And you come around and start your freaking process. And there's so many things you could do to get in the mind of a batter. You can go quicker with your, with your, your wind-up. You can go slower. You can take your time. Um, you really have the opportunity to mess with people when you're on the mound. It was my favorite thing. Look, this is one of my game balls from when I was, uh, let's see, this is Dodgers versus Phillies. So I was 13. still have this. Now this is, I loved baseball so much. You could probably tell by the way I'm speaking about it. But um, I was a soccer player. And my uh, family, just long line of soccer players, were Portuguese. So, of course, when I'm a kid, my, uh, my, my father wants me to play soccer. He pushes me into soccer. I'm happy to play because I loved it. I really enjoy soccer. And <clears throat> I loved soccer. So I played at, like, uh, with, a, with a bunch of my friends. We played soccer until I was, like, I think, nine. And then my best friend from soccer, he goes, you got to play baseball with me. And I'm like, no, I love soccer. I'm playing soccer. He goes, you got to play baseball. We need, more, we need more people on the team. And so like, I went on the field the first time, and, man, I freaking fell in love with this game. I got on the mound, and I started throwing bullets. 
And I was at that time when you're 46 feet away, like I was throwing bullets at that time. It's when you go back to 60 feet, six inches, and you're still a small guy, that's when it freaking sucks. But when I was 45 feet away from the mound or from the plate, I was throwing freaking bullets because I was just like everybody else out there. And I was throwing the knuckleball and all this other stuff, but I was throwing freaking bullets. And then it's like, I remember the day I went to 60 feet, six inches, and they were like, yeah, this is where you pitch from now. And I was like, what? It was just weird because it's another 15 feet doesn't seem like much, but the amount of time you have to react to a pitch is like crucial. And if someone's throwing 63 at 45 feet or throwing 63 at 60 feet, six inches, it's a major difference. 63 at 45 feels like 85. So there's, a, there's this whole dynamic of how close you are when you're throwing a ball 63 miles an hour. And that is something I lost when I got, everybody else got bigger and I didn't until senior year of high school. And that's why I developed the knuckleball, which I think is like the greatest pitch in the world. I was, I was showing my son how to, to transition from just grabbing the, the, the I, could, I could hold the ball like this, and by the time I come back to you, I'm holding it ready for my knuckleball. I, I'll just show you that. I come from here, and then right away, I'm right back here, and I get my knuckleball in place. I, I, this has become the most proficient pitch in the world for me. I can grab it at any time in the world. I could, go, I could come right at you, and while I'm coming at you, be ready to throw it. It's the craziest pitch. I love it. And the cool thing is every time you throw a knuckleball, it's different. But the most important thing and the hardest thing about throwing a knuckleball is making it look like you're throwing a fastball. And people can't tell you're throwing some weird pitch. And this is the thing I had to develop with my son for actually not very long. He picked it up quickly. I, I picked it up quickly, but then you work it. You have to work your craft. And I remember throwing it. That's the only thing I'd throw is that in my slider. And I was working on that because as a kid, they told you don't throw a curveball. You'll screw up your arm. And I always had these visions of being a real baseball player. And so I learned this slider where I take my thumb off the ball. I had this guy, Aaron Gallo, who taught me this. He was a double A player. Um, and one day he says, hey, this is how I throw my slider. He's like, the ball. And I just freaking ripped the thing down. And so I tried it, and he was like, that looks pretty cool. Keep working it. And so I decided instead of throwing a, a curveball, which everybody else throws, is to throw a slider and the, my, my knuckleball. The slider was very successful, but I just didn't like it. It's like, I don't know. I just love the way that knuckleball would just be like, you know, or it'd be like, sometimes it was like fall this way, or sometimes it would just like drop completely off or just go up. Like, it's the craziest thing when you see a good knuckleball. And that's why it's like, if you could be a lefty, I keep my telling my son, if you could be a lefty, who could throw in the, say, 80s or like low 90s one day because he's got a gun. This kid's got a gun even though he's small. And he could throw, and his, his curveball's nasty. Like, he has a whole different approach to me. He's like, I'm throwing a freaking curveball. Um, and he just throws this nasty curveball. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, he throws it 63 miles an hour. I threw 63 as a fastball. He's throwing a 63 mile an hour curveball at 15. And his fastball's around, hovering around 70 to 72. And he's still like a kid. He's 112 pounds. Do you guys understand what that means? I'm like, dude, when you're 180, when you're 200 pounds of muscle, if you actually go into the gym one day and you grow and you become a man because he's still a kid. If you're a six foot, six foot two kid who's throwing with that speed now, eventually you get another six, seven inches because I think he's five, six. You get about six, seven inches on you, and that extra weight. I mean, right now he's gunning it at 112 pounds. It's freaking nuts. And sometimes I'm even scared. Like, I, I, this is a weird thing. I wear glasses now because I've messed up my eyes being a real estate agent. You know, I'm like always looking at a screen, trying to find listings for my clients or working on listings for my sellers and looking for new listings, new clients. And my eyes got messed up. I remember I saw this like bright light out of the corner of my eye when I was 20. 9 30 and I freaked out I was like I think I you know something bad's going on I'm seeing this bright light in the corner of my eye and so I go to see the ophthalmologist I never saw one before I was 35 I'm sorry and I go to see the ophthalmologist and he goes um you, you know you're, you're kind of like blind and I go what <laughs> he goes yeah you know you got one eye that's like compensating for another eye you got stigmatisms in both eyes I'm like what does any of this mean you know, he's like, just put these on. Just put the freaking glasses. And I said, when do I wear them? He goes, just all the time. Don't ever take them off. I'm like, am I nearsighted? Am I farsighted? He's like, you're all sighted. Just freaking wear that shit, <laughs> you know? And so basically I wear them. But the interesting thing is when I take them off, like I take them off for the show because there's a lot of glare from my lights. 
um, I can see actually really clearly within like 15 minutes of taking them off. It's that first couple minutes where I'm still trying to reconnect and get my calibration back. But once I do, it's like a little blurry, but not bad. And I still wonder why, you know, he saw it worse than it is. And he, he did say one of your eyes is really compensating for the other one. And I, I'm not sure which one, I, again, I think it's my left eye. It really, it, it's, uh, it's really sharp and it like balances it out pretty well. But that's also what was causing me to see some sort of weird crap. And so basically once I put glasses on, I never had that issue again. So that's a good thing. But... When I'm wearing these glasses now, and I'm trying to catch my son throwing 71, 72 miles an hour from 60 feet, six inches, like I used to be like, yeah, whatever, I could catch a 90 mile an hour fastball. I'm freaking out, man. Like, I don't want to get down, because that thing's coming in. And I'm trying like, man, wait a second, that's 71, like, what is 85 like? What is 90 like right now at my age? Like, I can't imagine it, because I'm like, some, there's a few I remember thinking to myself, the ball, I tried to get my glove to where the ball was. I'm like, it, it may have been even faster. That's how thing, this thing was coming in. I tried to get my glove to the ball to catch it in time. And I realized the ball came by my glove. At, I grabbed, brought my glove up and the ball was like here. And I go, oh shit, that's not good. Because if he threw that right at my freaking nog and I'm like, oh, that, my hand was not quick. And my reflexes were always the best thing I had. It's like, I'm, I can just grab that freaking ball. And all of a sudden I'm like, dude, 72 feel real fast. You know what I mean? I'm like, maybe I should sit back a little bit. And I'll like stand up, so I'm always like this now. I'm like, all right, buddy, let's go. What do you got? Give it to me, you know? And so I can always jump out of the way if it starts coming at my face. Because uh, that's a big fear is you get hit in the face with a fastball, a curveball, knuckleball, that type of thing. Uh, so anyway, I don't know how I'm, why I'm talking about baseball. Just uh, I do love it. It's baseball season almost soon. Excited to see my son get back out there. And gosh, do I miss playing. Again, another with the freaking lightning bolt at the base of the, the feet, disgusting, like you got another scaly feet at this point. That's 130 years right there in that location. No one's ever washed those dogs. They needed the lightning in order to just kind of break away the grime, <laughs> you know? I mean, guys, sometimes when you understand it, you know? Yeah, Nick, right? Chris, how are you? So good to see you. Kit in the house. S. Coop, thank you so much for the donation. Wait, did it? Elgato came on. I got it right when I pushed the button. It's funny. I was pushing the button. I'm like, I hope that Elgato's not on. Wallace, how are you, my friend? So good to see you. Guys, we got into it tonight. We're talking about it. It's 43 minutes, and I didn't really fully break down the story. I just got, I, I still have not seen one video of the actual torch getting torched by lightning. It's all photoshopped images from close up by some guy named Luigi, who's like, oh guys, I was look I was just snapping pictures of the freaking torch when the lightning bolt came. Cause it's such a beautiful day. Can't even see the Statue of Liberty. It's fog, smog, Jersey. You make, you know, it's your choice. It could be all three. It's probably the Jersey smog fog deal. Look at this. That lightning bolt, does that go? I think it goes in front of this pole or through it. And if it does, then this is a fake. And all of these other weird looking little, like this is very easily done with Photoshop, guys. I could do this in 13 seconds. Let's freaking do it in 13 seconds. Now, I do have Photoshop and I probably, if I spent an hour, not even. Give me five minutes, really. I could probably make this. I can grab a, a lightning bolt, PNG it. I'll dr drag and drop just that lightning bolt into an image of the stupid Statue of Liberty. And then I'll lay it there right on the freaking torch with Lady Liberty. Drop it. Share it. Guys, look! Lightning bolt hit the torch! Mary Lou Retton's on the way! Freaking Mary Lou. She's coming out, guys. She's putting on the, you know, the gymnast outfit again. Olympics 84. You know, she's getting the gold as well. The mayor is giving it to her. Oh, I'm sorry, no, he's giving that to a couple of illegal aliens. He's like, look, they deserve it. I'm giving them a debit card, a place to stay. Actually, they're staying at Mary Lou Retton's house. Mary Lou Retton, she's out. You know, they're going to just give that to the... Is it illegals? Are we allowed to say that anymore, Joanne? <laughs> Joanne, are we allowed to say illegals anymore? Or is it... <laughs> Gosh almighty, Joanne, stop the wheezing! 
<laughs> Joanne says yes. They're giving away apartments in New York City, debit cards. There's homeless American citizens and veterans on the streets. They have to eat shit, okay? They're not worth our time. They're not worth our money. <laughs> no, we got $53 million for people that don't belong here, you know? We don't even know who the fuck they are, you know? That guy over there, he says he's building a bomb. <laughs> He's MacGyvering it. He only has toothpicks right now, but he says he could do it with the toothpicks. I, I don't even want to chance it, you know, but you guys are cool with it, right? Let's put them up at the St. Regis. How, how about that? You got the uh, suite? You want to give them the suite? The St. Regis. You got him in there. Regis Philbin, he came back from the dead to hang out with you at the St. Regis. With Hector, who took the shot, by the way, here. Sold it to NBC. Uh, look, man, I got this shot to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, you do? How much do you want for it? Uh, I don't know, 50,000 pesos? What, the $50,000? Yeah, that sounds good to me. You get the 50K, right? You deliver the photoshopped image. Statue of Liberty style, you know? They're broadcasting out there. Look, guys, the Statue of Liberty. Uh, the lantern, the torch from Apollo... It's been ignited. By who, Hector? Hector ignited it? Because it definitely wasn't the lightning. Guys, I'll prove it. Look. Her dumb feet. Keep getting the lightning bolt. And Dr. Scholes doesn't work. You, know, you rely on the lightning. <laughs> but Hector, if you, want, if you want to have a lantern that's full of lightning... A torch of lightning, you call Hector for that. But we did have the earthquakes, though. That happened, absolutely. I saw a couple freaky videos. I got to tell you, people, there was one lady, she's like doing her makeup. She's like, and all of a sudden, the whole freaking room is shaking. She's like, Ugh. and she did this all over her face. She had the lipstick over here like she was doing it on someone's donger. And you're like, oh, but it was because of the earthquake, guys. There was no donger involved. Um, what in the hell is this over here? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, New York was just hit with a magnitude 4.8 earthquake. We know. There it is. The fake shot from Hector. You know, they keep getting away with it. They're just selling fakes. Where's the video? Oh, I got the video for you. Here it is. Yeah, we saw the fake video. Or the fake picture, where is the video video of the torch being ignited? <laughs> so Mary Lou Retton can take it down the street and pick up her gold medal from Eric Adams and her debit card. Oh shoot, I forgot, she doesn't get one. Just people who don't belong here. And they get Mary Lou Retton's house as well. Uh, so guys, this is what's interesting. All right, this is what I was telling you about. I was trying to tell you about this, but where is it? They're not showing it to me. I wanted to see the video. So there's a video. We're here in the Northeast. We can now report, according to the USGS, the G Where is this? This isn't it. Hey, guys, who's that? It's me. I'm on right now. Hello. Let's see if I can see myself. I'm waving to myself. Hold on. This will be fun. <laughs> oh, look. There it is. There's me right there. I can see myself on X. <laughs> Guys, go over to X. We're watching me. Watch me. <laughs> That's just funny. Look at it. I'm laughing at myself. Uh, Joanne, stop wheezing. <laughs> Joanne, we're watching X. <laughs> You're there too with your stupid wheeze. And the farts. Gosh almighty, Joanne. Does, does anybody know what to do with that, with Joanne? Where is the video that I was trying to find? This, oh, here we go. This is it.
earthquake coming up on Monday. Did you hear that? We have the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. It's not over yet. Okay, let's see. Which, which, which broadcast is this? Fox News. Oh, my goodness. America Reports. Did you guys think it's going to be a transformative experience? That's why I put that in the title, guys. Let's see. America First. Fox. Fox News. These idiots are letting out the truth without realizing it. Nah. I was hoping that we'd find, oh, this guy freaked me out here. He said, well, we all know that the cove is intended to get to our brains in order to dumb down the population so we don't fight back. Sounds about right to me. Sleep Sofa Joe. What? My Aunt Judy told me. So, guys, basically, that's what we got here. Look at this. This is what we have going on here. Let's see what happens. This guy was beat up. This is why. This is why. They stole his car. They got his car. They stole his car. They got right. Oh, oh, shit. And now they're beating him up. They stole his car. They're beating him up. They're, they're, they're beat like eight guys are beating up a white guy. They stole his car. I mean, this is this is what's interesting to me. So how how do we get rid of racism by just being more racist? Is that how it works here? We stop racism by being more racist. Racist. It's like it doesn't even make sense. These people are vicious, and it's like I see videos like this all the time. Twenty people out there beating up a white guy who stole his car. They stole his car. They got his car. They then they start beating the hell out of him right there. Oh, Look oh, at this. One, two, three guys just jump oh. on him again. This is pathetic. Uh, what in the freaking hell is this? You remember when somebody shot Ronald Reagan? I freaking hate people. I mean, honestly, stupid people everywhere. Look at this douche. Trapping capacity so this much capacity. that today Ugh. we trapped as much extra heat. Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, guys. I can't stand Al Gore. This whole horse shit that he concocted to make millions and create, like, carbon taxes and Paris climate accords. And then these assholes coming out here and telling us that we're still not doing enough when China is out there producing more CO2 than anyone else on planet Earth, and you can't get them to stop. We're at, we were at negative levels in the U.S. when we had the former president here. We were energy independent. Everything's turned to complete shit in this country. And you got this douchebag over there. As would be released would by 750,000. I flew here in my fucking private jet. Shut your fucking face up, dickhead. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just sick of them. I'm sick of him. Al Gore? I'm showing you the door, Dickie. Uh, I can't stand him, you know? I don't know what it is that people that create world-changing negative agendas that aren't good for the people now that talk about a future that doesn't exist and may not exist because we have a freaking solar whatever coming next week and there's going to be earthquakes or maybe floods or whatever the hell is going on. There's elephants that are just going up to higher levels. What, what do they do that for? Because... Animals understand to go to higher levels. We don't. We're stupid idiots here watching Netflix when something does go down. But I'll tell you, when you got ass clowns like this that get generations to start spouting insanity and saying, let's spend $50 trillion to drop the CO2 level 0.0003%. Well, how much of the atmosphere is it currently? It's got to be 20 to 30% of our atmosphere, right, guys? The CO2 levels? I got to figure it's 35% of our atmosphere is CO2, right, Joanne? What is it? What do you think? Joanne, <laughs> stop the wheezing. What'd you say? <laughs> guys, Joanne said 0.04%. That's 0.04%. <laughs> yeah, 
That's how much of the atmosphere is CO2. 0.04%. Pray tell me, my beautiful people on the other side of the screen, how many things that you've ever known in the history of time have an effect if they're 0.04% of the total sum? Anyone? Anyone? Basically 0%, right? Like zero, literally. I would say it's absolute zero. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 0.04%. You're not even at 1%. You're under 1%. Actually, under half of 1%. You know that, right? You're at 0.04%. So you're not even at 0.05 where you're like, oh, let's split it down the middle. Instead of doing 1%, We'll split up like one half of a percent. How about that? No, mother, it's 0.04%. Deal with it. You're carbon. Guys, we have to change everything that we're doing. And we have to stop using fossil fuels. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, that's right. No, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, we just have slave labor to get our cobalt. <laughs> and then the, the waste from the tires. Not a big deal. We still kill the devil, gas companies, and anything that's not green, you know? We have the infrastructure for everything. We're going to do trucks across the country, charging them, you know? Everything at the ch same time. We could do it. Everybody, every homeowner has a charger at home. You've got major industrial trucks that are filling for goods, you know, traveling across the country. They're charging all at the same time. It's going to work perfectly, you know? It's the perfect America, really. No more combustion engines. Just, you know, cheap child labor and disgusting, you know, practices. And also using up other precious materials like cobalt, etc., to build out these batteries. Much better than gas, though, you know? Trust me, because Al Gore said so. With Some his stupid Hiroshima class haircut. atomic bombs. Oh, I can't stand him in his dumb microphone. Look how he has that dick microphone coming out from over here. Ah, look, I'm Al Gore. You're a friggin' asshole, right? Oh, guys, I'm gonna get in trouble for being abusive. Exploding on the Gore. earth every 24 My hours. Guys, and that extra cool. heat yeah, it is raising temperatures, raising temperatures, threatening to make I'm raising money. I'm gonna steal more from the American people. He's a duke. Dookie. Dookie McGee, we call him sometimes. I, I, I realize I, I'm going to get in trouble, guys, for being bully. I'm a bully right now. <laughs> I really just like to roast everybody that I do the news story. You know, I'm, I'm doing a news story. But I would say, this guy a douche. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here doing the story. He's there with the goofy microphone coming out, you know? Well, here he is again. Look at uh, so uh, climate change. Much. Who is he? Freaking Dr. Phil? Dr. Phil, what we're doing with climate change is it's going to change. You're wondering if it's going to change. It's going to change for the good, for the better. And if you say it's not, you're Al Gore. If you're not Al Gore, you're Dr. Phil, right? I should be do Dr. Phil as an impressionist. It, yeah, I am it as is an raising. Yes. Guys, temperatures, temperatures threatening to make much larger areas of the earth physiologically oh, unlivable. 0.04% yeah. douchey. You know, listen, here's the thing. You could listen to Douchey McGee, or you could say to yourself, you know what, that makes sense. 0.04% of anything is absolute garbage, <laughs> you know? And perhaps that uh, all of this hubbub about the CO2 leading temperature change, we should look back about 750,000 years, the last time that the temperature change caused the CO2 to follow. That might just be a, a very interesting just talking point uh, because that happened, okay? Where you see temperatures rise and all of a sudden CO2 levels follow. And maybe, just maybe, when temperatures fell, the CO2 just took a longer time to follow. And now you see it as the opposite. When things are starting to go the other way, oh, it's pushing up CO2. Eventually, you'll see temperatures go by CO2. That would happen at some point. But that's not Mark Inspires climate scientist. That's Mark Inspires using my freaking inner compass, you know, searching and following my North Star, which is, used to be here now, like the North Star is like over there, like they were dealing with 
magnetic pole switches. There's a lot of stuff happening, guys, on this with this solar eclipse. Potential pole switches. We got Russia dropping nuclear uh, EMF bombs on us. You got solar flares coming in, EMFs. You've got um, C CMEs. You got Mark Wages talking about that. Ron Tyler doing it. And then you got this Generating dickhead. a massive flow of climate refugees migrating across international borders, as many as a billion in this century. A billion, is that how many people you want to come in here from other parts of the country or the world that don't belong here without coming in legally? I love it when people say, you, you don't want immigrants. I want freaking immigrants. I want people to immigrate to this country. That means you come to the door and you knock. Hello? Uh, yes, can I help you? I, I have to get a citizenship, man. Um, okay, uh, what's, uh, what's your name? Antonio Montana. An Antonio Montana, okay. And where are you from, Antonio? I'm from Cuba. You're from Cu Cuba, okay. Uh, you know, we're not taking Cubans right now. I'm not sure if, the, if you heard that, but in America, we're not taking Cubans. Are you kidding me? I want my human rights, like your president, Joe Biden, he says, okay? I want my $450,000. I want my fucking house, mate, okay? Do you give me a house over here, Texas? I'm in the panhandle, okay? I got many. Many come and hang out with me, mate. We work the streets. I got to sell yayo, okay? Sosa? I got Sosa on the other line, mate, okay? Uh, okay, Antonio Montana, Sosa. Uh, who's Manny again? Manny? Are you kidding? Manny had TB. He was in a san sanitarium. You should have let him out. <laughs> you should have you told him he was a horse. <laughs> anyway, look, guys, when Al Pacino comes to the door and he knocks, is Antonio Montana, you know? Hey, Sosa, all I have in this world is my word and my boss, okay? I don't break them for no one, man, okay? How many times? You tell me one time, one time, okay? You tell me one time. Antonio Montana. Where'd you get a scar like that, eating pussy? How'd you gotta get a scar like that, eating pussy, man? Huh? How'd you do it? You tell me, okay? I got to. I hear with many. Antonio Montana. You put me in Ravenga. I stab him in the chest. Freedom Town. Guys, he's in Freedom Town. Antonio Montana doing it. Uh, but that's all started because of this complete We dash. reached true net zero true and net stopped zero. adding to the amount of this heat trapping gas up there. Oh, how do we do that, The temperatures Dick? will stop going do up. Do we do that by us oh, going and like not ever using CO2 again or creating CO2 while China just does it more and ships send products to your house? Scumbag. Oh, let's jump on our private jet and go to China to get those products. That's what you probably do, Al Gore. You know? I'm worth a couple hundred million dollars because I created this whole climate catastrophe bullshit. Right? No, it's real, guys. It is. The climate changes. In the history of time, it's always changed. Don't you guys remember, or we just want to pretend now it never happened, that this total freaking douche was like, it's global warming. They went around calling it global, global warming for years until people realized it's not global warming. It's called climate change because the freaking climate changes on this planet constantly. It's never the same. And everything changes. Does your life stay the same forever? No, it changes because the earth is just like a life. It changes. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not. It's a freaking roller coaster ride just like our lives but when you got this chode over here trying to tell us that oh we got to do more you got to be more responsible what's that honey no gas up the jet i'll be right there you got the freaking g40 15 whatever the hell it's called you're jumping in it gore total dish right oh goodness guys sometimes when you're on it you know sometimes you're doing it <laughs> sue b how are you that's how they gotta be with it right you got Jacqueline Grace in the house. Guys, we're back to the old show. I don't give a crap. You know what I mean? Help a brother out. Patreon, YouTube, X Rumble, and also Spotify. You can listen to the show now while you drive. I've been live for 1,922 days in a row, so if you enjoy what you're listening to, I'm live every day of the year. 
And we got Al Gore over here telling you guys how you're horrible human beings and he's gassing up the jet. He can't wait to take a trip. He's going to Montenegro. There's a party there. He's gonna do a soiree. It's a Red Room deal. P. Diddy's going. <laughs> he can't wait. Epstein is gonna be there as well. You guys think that he died. I'm sorry. They got him out. He's the only guy who could put the parties together. P. Diddy is going down, so who else is going to do the parties? They're bringing Epstein back. Anyway, guys, sometimes I have to lay it out for you so you get it. There's a lot going on with this total eclipse, including the reemergence of Epstein and Tupac. <laughs> uh, another one. P. Diddy killed him. They killed him, but he did kill Biggie, you know. You know, when you have zero talent, like P. Diddy, you just have to murder everybody around you and, and their potential as well. He's, he's awesome at that. And also murdering their hiney butts. Guys, you know, when you're here reporting the news, you know, and P. Diddy decided that he wanted to go in deep, you know, mob deep, in too deep. He's doing all of it. You guys remember that song, In Too Deep? P. Diddy loves that one, you know, especially when there's boys around, you know. Oh, goodness. He could produce a heck of an album, though. What's that? Yeah, no, he's shit when it comes to actual talent, but, you know, he could produce the, he could open up the, the studio. <laughs> yeah, you go in there, grab the microphone. Does anybody got a beat? Yeah, no, good, I'm glad you got a beat, because I freaking blow. I'm the, I literally, I blow, dude, I'm like, I'm into that, you know. And I also have no, no talent at all. That's why I killed Biggie and Tupac. <laughs> they were making me look bad. Uh, you know, when P. Diddy, the inside the mind, it comes to life. And you're sitting there and you're realizing, oh my goodness, the whole time, P. Diddy was thinking about that guy over there. And he was thinking about murdering anybody with talent. And murdering their potential, taking all their money so he can buy another island. <laughs> to throw one of his parties, Red Room parties, you know, elites. The president's going to be there. I bet you he's got footage of Barrick, Barry, with Miguel, you know? And he, he, she, it's there. <laughs> you know, sometimes she walks like she's in... There's an old game. I don't know if you guys remember this. Does anybody remember Bonk's Adventure? TurboGrafx-16... Bonk's Adventure, or it, it, there was, actually, I'm sorry, it was Altered Beast. Altered Beast. <laughs> Go and watch Altered Beast, pull it up. You'll see these people walking like this. I'm pretty sure modeled after Miguel. Go check it out. That, that's just a personal side note. You go and check it out. Do the side-by-side. -side. Miguel, take the Ellen footage where the donger is going like this in her pants. His pants, its pants. And then also the picture, you know, and together you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, huh, it really is Miguel. Altered Beast style. Turbo Graphics 16. I, go, I know you guys used to play it when you were kids. <sighs> anyway, look, guys, these people are out of their minds. <laughs> to get out and register to vote. And you have to vote, vote. for Biden-Harris. <laughs> for communism. Because that other guy, the orange man, the orange man, like this, he is going to take away your social security. And a lot I, of oh, you yeah. think so, you stupid blob? You look like a bonehead, you peacock idiot. Oh, look, I'm, hell, I'm holding a breast stereo in my head. kids right now, oh, well, until they're 26, can be on their parents' health care. And the orange man wants to stop that. Woo! Oh, no. He wants to stop illegals from coming in, destroying your country, and breaking into your stupid house and squatting. Oh, look, I found a house here with these stupid idiots. Now I live here. This is my house. Get the freaking hell out of here. We had this dubby shows up looking like oh, no. freaking people. <laughs> okay, everybody, Pennsylvania. I can't stand everybody right now. I'm serious. Like, what is wrong with the world? A uh, bird flu plant Debaru could be 100 times worse than the Clovey scientists said. Interesting when the Who's about to take over the world with their bullshit. Oh, I got it, guys. Let's get a bird fluish going. You know what I mean? Where's the bird flu from? Fluhan? 
<laughs> we couldn't call the Wuhan, the Fluhan, first time around. I did. No one knew it. It's the best name ever. Everybody's like, oh, it's called it the Chata Flu. Look, it's Chata. No, it's not. It's called the Fluhan. You're there in Fluhan. It happened. You had the Jing Chao freaking, you know, uh, bat lady there. She's doing it in Fluhan. And you guys wanted to go with the Wuhan Flu. No, that's just dumb. It's a tongue twister, too. The Wuhan Flu, the Wuhan Flu. You know, you can't double decker that one, but you could Fluhan it. It's the flu hon, get the flu hon, go be a bygone to the bygone by your gone, because you got the flu hon, right? It was a hit on the polka circuit, if you guys remember that. Anyway, guys, Barbara Streisand in the house. The Republicans claim to be all about freedom, but they propose draconian restrictions on women's health care. Oh my goodness, limitations on books one can read. Yeah, like don't put, I don't know, I got a good idea. When my kids, are nine years old and they're going to the library, there shouldn't be a book accessible where they're talking about strap-ons and dildos and how you could fist somebody. Okay, so Barbara, that shouldn't be available to any human being unless you're specifically looking for it. When I was a kid, there used to be an X-rated section where you would go to find Playboy or whatever the freaking hell at the back of a store. This is where you put such smut. I don't want books about banging, hetero banging either for my kid to be seeing at nine years old. So get the shit off of the racks and stop making it seem like it's about something else. It's unbelievable. These bleeding heart, ridiculous people are so radical. And she'll be the first one that says, did you see that zebra walk by? And you mean the little girl who walked by and was going, brruh, brruh, brruh. she was pretending to be a zebra that someone painted stripes on? I did it. I went in there, I broke in at night, and I freaking painted stripes on her. Permanent paint. I used oil-based paint. She's gotta wipe, she's gotta freaking rub that stuff for years to get it off. She's never getting it off. It's like tattooed on her skin. Stripe, stripe, stripe. She wants to be a freaking zebra. Barbara, you can now feel like you're part of the scene and method acting it, you know? Uh, Barbara, Babs. You know, some people call her Babs. Dava Lucre. What else we can get? Gavin Newsom. He's doing a bang up job in California. Right, guys? What are gas prices at? And uh, home prices? How are they doing over there? Anybody? They're having a good time, aren't they? Oh, goodness. Guys, when you're on an hour and 12 minutes, you're supposed to do less than an hour because you're going to go and build four beat seats. It is now 12.08 in the freaking morning, and I'm still at it. And we're just ripping on everybody. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? So I am a mother. My children call me mother. They call me quite a few other things as well. Um, and I just, to the proponents of this amendment, if we are going to be inclusive, would you also add then pregnant father, pregnant surrogate mother? What? Um, I, I, I truly believe that pregnant person covers everybody. Shut up! Me. Just shut up, everybody! With the insanity! Go live your life and shut the fuck up about everything else. It's so ridiculous. Look at this guy. Huh? Uh, my hand's not supposed to be on your breasts. Oh, well, my Aunt Judy told me it's okay if I did that with my daughter in the shower when she's 11. Right? That's what he did. Gosh almighty. Bunch of morons, though, I'll tell you what's going on here. What is going on here? He's peeling out on it. Ah, whatever. Um, look, I, I want people to be happy. I just don't want them to try to indoctrinate my child. I don't want them to put books on the shelf that no human should be looking at unless they're seeking it out on, in an X-rated section in a library. Um, I, don't want, I don't want books where some guy's talking about how he got in the pants of some girl and he got her pregnant and how he used a condom, any of that stuff. My kids shouldn't be reading about that, just like they shouldn't be reading about how the guy meets another guy and how there's two guys who are parents. That's not appropriate for children to be reading. And if someone has two guys for parents or two women for parents, that's who should be reading those books. You don't force them on kids who aren't thinking that way because they have a normal family situation. And 
and you're forcing on ideology that is ridiculously insane. I mean, this is what I'm really fearing most. We have this crazy solar total eclipse coming up. Earthquake today, I've never had one on the East Coast, ever. We had two today. And there's apparently going to be a massive one on Monday. Just right on the tail of the highest office in the land, completely disregarding Easter Sunday and focusing on an insane group of people that have decided to take over this country and make it seem like everybody's attacking them. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world when I see all these people. It's like, it's so dangerous to be a trans right now. What is, I don't get it. I don't get it. No one gives a shit. No one cares. Go live your life. What we don't want is you going out there and making everything about you and saying, well, now we have to be in this and now you have to change this, this. and sports. We got to be able to do this. No, stick with what your chromosomes say. This is not fair. I'm born a man. If I decide that I feel a certain way, I have certain muscles that women are not born with. I have a certain lung capacity that women do not have. If I decide to switch, I still have those advantages. That doesn't change just because I feel a certain way. But we're living in clown world where people are like, I feel that way, therefore I am that. And if I took these couple of things, now I am that. And you look at them on a freaking stage and you want to cry with laughter because you're like, that, what is going on here? I got two feminine looking normal, this is creation. And then you got a dude, a mule in the middle of the stage trying to, I don't know, long hair in it with, with lipstick on. And again, no offense. I'm not being trying to be offensive. What I am trying to say is stop indoctrinating. Stop going up to children and saying, hey, why don't you join our... Don't tell your parents. Oh, if you're feeling like you should just do it, go rebel against your parents and join the... And you'll hear these crazy chants as these people walk on the street and they'll say, we're here we're, and we're here to take your children and we're coming for your children. They say this stuff and you should be frightened. I have no problem with what you do at home, what you do on the street, when you're with the person you love, with you're with somebody who's in a group and you're out there and you guys are, you can do whatever you want when you're there. When you start publicizing that you have to be involved in every conversation and people have to now change English to call you things that don't make sense. My child saying to someone, how are they doing when it's one person standing in a room? It's just insanity. It's just stupid. Pick something, okay? Well, I feel like I'm, again, a camel, whatever the freaking hell, I'll pick it. But this whole idea that we can't even stick to two simple things and then focus on the other issues in life. It's like, no, every day is about these conversations that we're not allowed to have. Like, I'm going to get in trouble for, t for doing this show. I may get a strike just because I'm here speaking my truth. And this is unfortunate. I probably should just erase this freaking feed because they're going to do that. That's, these guys are dicks. You know what I mean? YouTube, just total dicks. And I'm already in the hole with them. I already am demonetized. You know, we can't get more than 100 views for anything. I've been here for five years in a row every day. This isn't anything new. It's always been this way. They just finally told me that I'm a, harm, I'm a harmful channel in their, in their mind. And so as it goes, I will always be here putting on this show and unless you guys tell somebody new it will always be just us and they'll never bring other people in on their own accord and say hey you know what this is a cool show we could bring people together no I'm, I'm a harmful channel that's the way they see me on all platforms and it's crazy that's just like more proof that it's like dude you can't get out of the hole you're in but um i still show up 1922 days in a row and Look at this, they're already prepping us. In New York City, earthquakes are generally tiny and unnoticed, like we have them all the time. We don't, we don't. In January, a 1.7 magnitude earthquake was recorded in Astoria. Last April, 3.6, and they're trying to say all these things. Okay, there was a 5.8 in Virginia and led to the evacuation of City Hall and Midtown office buildings in Manhattan. That's Virginia's six hours away, seven hours away. This was very close to home here. And when they're starting to already prep you by saying, look, we have them all the time. Monday's looking more scary. You know? You start to get concerned about it. 
Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to get in trouble, guys, <laughs> by doing this feed tonight. You know? I've been keeping it so clean. No, no politics, just doing the comedy news. I even intended to just come in here tonight, chat for a little bit, and then go and build these beat seats. But I'm pretty sure what I said there over the last 15, 20 minutes is the best rant ever. And it will be taken down because of that. Uh, just like many of my other shows on YouTube. Um, they pulled down another one the other day where I did the Dr. Evil and Bill Gates conversation that wound up becoming a truth instead of a funny comedy. Uh, and so I'll continue to do these, uh, take these moments to the extreme. And unfortunately, you may have to find me somewhere else because uh, I think I'm just about <laughs> out of steam here on YouTube, right? I mean, we, uh, I think we're at 15,200 subscribers. I don't even know. That's, after this much time, it should be 150,000 at least. And we, um, but we're still uh, at past 15,000 now. And it seems like, Every time I'm getting close to staying on track, I fall off. It's like I'm, I'm on the wagon or something, and then I fall off, and I just have these rants. And I get into these things, I'm flipping on freaking Al Gore, you know? And uh, so, by the way, if for some reason tomorrow, <laughs> you're like, why isn't Mark live? I am live. I'll be live on X. I'll be live on Rumble. I will be live, if possible, on Mark Inspires TV on YouTube as well. That's our backup channel there. Um, but there's a good chance that, that uh, this gets me a strike or something just by being myself. And it baffles, it, it baffles the mind um, how words can be so offensive and how I could be taken off the air for words when they're just literally thoughts, uh, frustrations. If you can't let out your frustrations in a world, then you know we're not living in a free world. You know, we're not. We're living in a very much controlled society, and the control, the mechanism is a thumb on the neck. They're putting more IRS agents. I mean, there's so many different things going on right now, and we're at the disadvantage. Yeah, we're on Rumble. Sue B, if you could head over to Rumble and just type in Mark Inspires, or I can give you the link to tonight's show over there right now so you guys can maybe head over and just make sure you follow so you have it. Let's see. Let me open it up, see if anybody's even on Rumble. Uh, there's, there's one, one simple one. sugar hack anyone can do to balance glucose levels almost overnight. Did Rumble. you know that type 2 diabetes is a completely re... But... We at least have 347 people on Rumble. So here we go. This is the link. If you guys want to at least join that. And also on X. We're on X. I'm on Clapper Live during the, the live shows now as well. So again, if you can't find me anywhere... Make sure, oh, thank you so much, S. Coop. If you can't find me on YouTube, find me over there. I do have a premiere tomorrow morning. Not tomorrow at 2, I think. Um, really funny bit I did. I already dropped this on Clapper and TikTok or pieces of it. Um, Beer Can Island. This is totally nuts. I came up with a great comedy there and uh, at the end. But it's a really cool island that's for sale in Florida. And I did a really funny bit on it. So hope to see you there for that. Uh, I'm working on other stuff, but I have to get these beat seats done, so I may not get more content out until Sunday. We'll see if I can get anything else out tomorrow. I have like three songs I'm in the process of editing. Uh, but guys, if you can, please head over to YouTube, X, Rumble, subscribe, turn on all notifications. This is the longest running daily variety show on the planet, 1922 days in a row on Clapper. We got Bianca kicking with me again. How are you, Bianca? Demesha, Lena Bergman. Sira Papa, Zira Bappy, Siri Pop, Siri Bappy, I don't know, trying to say it. Julie Martinez, Darian Del Valle Martinez. So good to see you, Darian. And if you're out there and you're new to the show, welcome. Join us tomorrow and make sure you check out some of the 4,500 pieces of content on YouTube. Let me see if I could find you and thank you guys over here on the tube. Don't go anywhere. Oh, I can't believe I went that deep into the freaking pit tonight. You know, sometimes you start ranting. And when your mark inspires, you get into it. We don't have a script. I don't have a script. Never have, never will. So when I start going, guys, I got to say also, like the first half was actually ridiculously cool talking about like the, my, my kid on the mound and baseball and my love for baseball. So like I just happened to kind of flip out when I saw Al Gore's stupid freaking nog. You know? And when you see a nog, like Al Gore's on the screen, you know, you gotta react. <laughs> you gotta react, you know? 
It's a dumb noggin. Anyway, Chris, kill it and grill it. Kit Covert in the house. Leisure number seven. Mental Grace, guys, Jacqueline Grace, proud owner of a beat seat. We're gonna have a beat seat jam very soon. I hope Jacqueline will join us for that. Nick AM, Pamela Swan, S Coop, Subi, or not to be, right? We're gonna be, because we want to live. We want to live another day, guys. The show must go on, right, Virginia? Guys, the last big earthquake happened in Virginia. Virginia's with us tonight, the entire state. And Virginia is also here, double Virginia's. Oh, I'm getting some love from Bianca. Thank you, Bianca, you're amazing over on Clapa. I'm hoping that you hit us up on YouTube, be a part of the family there. Especially since every day, the names I just read off, Chris, Kill It and Grill It, Kit, Leisure number seven, Jacqueline Grace is gonna start showing up a lot more like she used to, but all these names, S. Coop runs the, the chat with all of her positivity and sharing links. Trish Killian's not with us at the moment, but she's here every day. Pamela Swan, Sue B's now here to not to be, but she's gonna be here tomorrow and every other day beyond. Guys, beat seats are being built. Virginia, you're gonna see all these awesome people. We've got Wolf Thistle, Modoc Roughstock, Sig Sour, Mark Wages, Ron Tyler. You show up on the Mark Inspire show and you connect with the coolest people on planet Earth. And you connect with the coolest show on planet Earth. There is no script. This is the moment taking place. I welcome you to this creative experience <clears throat> that takes place every day of the year. And the challenge is always to try to bring something new to you. It's never the same. And that's what I love about it. I could never be a like a method actor. I gotta shift it. It's, it's gotta be different every time. You got you got to so go until tomorrow. Go Nick Lafferan. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for coming here. Go go I will be back. Go That's a promise. Go uh Joanne, would you like to say goodbye? Or are you just gonna wheeze? <laughs> So wheeze? You're gonna wheeze? <laughs> you know, sometimes you're dealing with it, guys. Sometimes you got, you I'm gonna get my outro here, Joanne, and maybe a little bit less wheeze. Guys, when you go to YouTube X and Rumble and you watch the show back and you see the green screen, you're gonna see Joanne and all her wheeziness. You'd be like, I love this show because of Joanne's wheezy job of the hot look. You gotta go away. You gotta go away.